Right, yeah, so as the title says, I will talk about uh, Darstamat ECMA measures today. Uh, so classically, of course, um, this is given in the context of uh, Hamiltonian torus actions. So let's say at, at regular points of the moment map, uh, when you push forward the Viewville measure on X by the moment map, uh, what you get is a measure on the dual of the Lie algebra, uh, which is actually given by a nice function uh, times the Lebesgue measure there. So this function vol associates to uh, some uh, element of the dual of the Lie algebra, the symplectic volume of the corresponding reduced space. And then the other big thing about this function is that it is a polynomial on the on T star. Um, and what I want to talk about today is, uh, you know, my attempts to extend this to suitable Hamiltonian actions of symplectic groupoids. Right, so I will start by just quickly writing down the definition of, uh, of such a Hamiltonian action. Um, then I will go into quite some detail into Darstamat ECMA measures in the context of PMCTs. Uh, so PMCTs, uh, for some manifolds of compact types, they have a lot of nice properties. And one of the main properties they have is that you have uh, basically an analogous notion of Darstamat ECMA measure there. And that's basically the starting point of how to extend this to Hamiltonian actions as well. Uh, and then at the end, I'll just talk about some results. Uh, Right. So just quickly to write down the definition. So a symplectic groupoid is a Lie groupoid with multiplicative symplectic form on it. Uh, and these have been studied a lot now. And basically you can think of them as global analogs of uh, the global objects corresponding to Poisson manifolds. And there is a notion of Hamiltonian action of these things, which is you have some groupoid action on a symplectic manifold, and then you call this action Hamiltonian if you have this multiplicativity condition. Uh, I can't really go into detail, so if you haven't seen it before, I'm sorry, but you'll just have to trust me that this is a notion that makes sense and that generalizes a lot of the known notions of Hamiltonian action, in particular the one for group actions. I'll just write down for the case of a torus, because I will come back to that later. So. In the case of a torus action, you can kind of replace a Hamiltonian torus action, you can replace it by an action of this groupoid. So this is the action groupoid of the coadjoint action. And this has a symplectic form because this is isomorphic to the cotangent bundle. And then the action of T just lifts to an action of this groupoid on space with the same moment map. This is specifically how it generalizes Hamiltonian actions. This works for any, any Lie group. Right, so that's a Hamiltonian action. Uh, and basically, I will try to get a Dijkstra Heckman measure for these things where I assume the symplectic group to be regular, source connected, and source proper. Okay. Right, so. Now let's go into PMCTs for a little bit. So a PMCT is basically, I, I told you earlier, symplectic group which you think of as global objects corresponding to Poisson manifolds, uh, and then sort of mimicking classic Lie theory, you know, Lie algebras and Lie groups. Uh, you say a Poisson manifold has a certain compactness type if it can be integrated by a symplectic groupoid, a source connected symplectic groupoid. Uh, with, with some compactness type. And the one that we're interested in today will be source proper, which will mean that the source fibers of the symplectic group width are, sorry, that the source map is proper. So for PMCTs, uh, you have analogs, so regular ones at least, uh, you have analogs of the, of Darstamat Heckman results. So uh, one of the main, nice properties that these things have is that their leaf space has has interesting structure namely the leaf space of a pmct is always an integral of fine orbifold and then this integral of fine structure allows you to state these dicemat heckman results so you have uh 
a linear variation result, which I won't really talk about today, but which is important because it will give you the polynomial behavior. Uh, and then more importantly, there is uh, a notion of diostromat Heckman measure for PMCTs. Or more importantly. Hmm? Oh yeah, the leaf space, yes, yes, yes. The leaf space of the symplectic foliation, yes, on the base. Um, right, so there is a notion of diostromat Heckman measure on the leaf space, which is still polynomial, just like in the classical case. Uh, and that's what I will now explain in some more detail. So, right, let's start with a regular source connected source proper symplectic groupoid. Uh, and then there are, we got a bunch of measures on the leaf space. So, first of all, this integral of fine structure, I told you it's an integral of fine orbifold, right? So this, this basically comes down to having a transverse integral of fine structure on, on M, right? So this is a lattice with some properties in the conormal space, conormal bundle to the foliation. Because you have this lattice, you have, you also get a density on the normal space, okay? Think of taking just any basis of the lattice and wedging them all together. This will give you a well-defined density. And then this defines a measure on the leaf space. And I don't really have time to go into detail about how. There is this paper by Kreinich and Mestre where they, it's called uh, measures on differentiable stacks where they sort of go through the whole framework on how to do this properly. I hope, you know, intuitively it's kind of, it kind of makes sense, right? This, you have a density on the on the normal space, which maybe hopefully it makes sense that this will give you a measure on the on the leaf space. Okay, so this measure that is given by the integral of fine structure will be called the affine measure. I'll write mu f for it. So that's one measure that you have. Um, oh right, <laughs> I should say uh, if you want to be a little bit more explicit about this, uh, you can sort of describe this measure on the leaf space by a measure just on M, uh, right? Because you have symplectic leaves here. So you can combine this, this normal density uh, just with the sort of leaf, leaf-wise leuval density, okay? Taking here the, the symplectic forms on the leaves. This will give a density on M and you have an associated measure. And then this measure is related to this uh, affine measure on the leaf space as follows. So if you push forward uh, this mu m to the leaf space, what you get is again a vol function uh, times this affine measure. So what is this vol function now? Well, it's almost the same as or very similar to what it was before in the classical case. Um, you take the symplectic so to a point in the leaf space, it associates the symplectic volume of the associated leaf, which, you know, maybe informally makes sense because, you know, the leaf-wise form you put there is exactly the symplectic form on the leaf. Then there is this uh, extra term here. So you have to multiply this by the number of connected components of the isotropy group uh, corresponding to this leaf. Uh, basically, where this comes from is that you know, the way you put this measure on the leaf space is you're not really integrating over leaves, you're integrating over source fibers. Um, so if your, if your isotropy group is disconnected, you get this extra, extra factor from that. You'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, this is what you get. Okay. The diastromat Heckman measure in this context is easier to define because you can just, uh, push forward the Liouville measure on the space of arrows of the groupoid all the way down to the leaf space. So these maps are all proper. And then uh, one of the big results uh, on PMCTs, this is from PMCT2 by Kranich Fernandez and Martinez Torres is that this diastomat Heckman measure is equal to volume squared times mu f on, where the square basically comes from your basically integrating over source fibers twice. Once when you push down to, to M and then once again, when you push down to the leaf space. But then again, 
we have the similar result that this vol function is a polynomial on B. Okay, so this is very reminiscent of the classical result. Right, so, okay, what can we now actually say about Hamiltonian actions? So, in the free case, we, we, you can sort of very nicely write down the results. So, let's say we start again with a uh, regular source-connected source proper symplectic groupoid. Uh, we have a free Hamiltonian action with a proper moment map. Um, then the quotient is just, again, a regular Poisson manifold of source proper type. Okay, and in particular, an integration is given by like the gauge construction here. Um, so that's an integration of the quotient. And this is symplectically Marita equivalent to the, to the original uh, group weight that's acting. And then you can say very generally actually that if you start with a symplectic Marita equivalence between two symplectic group weights, um, of course, this Liouville measure on here, you can push down to B, get uh, a Darstermann Heckman measure. And then the result is that this will equal uh, Vol 1, Vol 2 times the affine measure. So here, Vol 1 is this Vol function for the left group with Vol 2 is this Vol function for the right group with. Okay, so it's kind of mixed. Of course, both these functions are polynomials, so we do in fact get in this case that the darcy heckman measure is a polynomial times the affine measure. So in this case, in the sort of the classical case, um, the vol function for this left groupoid, which is just this action groupoid, that will just be constant one. And then this vol two function on the quotient is exactly the classical vol function that gives you volumes of, uh, of reduced spaces because the reduced spaces are exactly the leaves of, uh, of what would be the quotient, right? So this directly generalizes the classical result. Okay. Now the locally free case um, is a bit more complicated because of course your quotient is not a smooth manifold anymore in general. Um, of course, when we assume it to be locally free, it is still an orbifold, and it's actually a Poisson orbifold um, that can, that is presented by this groupoid. Okay, so of course it's just the action groupoid that presents the orbifold, and then the Poisson structure is presented by this Dirac structure here. Uh, and. Maybe, yeah, sorry, I, don't, I can't go into detail, but if you think about it a little bit, the leaf space of this Dirac structure, you can kind of think of it as the leaf space of this Poisson or the fold. So uh, the leaf space we're interested in is the leaf space of this Dirac structure. The good thing is that this Dirac structure is what's called a DMCT. So it's actually of, of source proper type again. So there is this groupoid here, uh, which basically combines the, the pair groupoid with the action groupoid. This is a groupoid over X, and this is actually a presymplectic groupoid integrating this Dirac structure. Okay. Now, all these results that I mentioned about PMCTs, there is analogous results for, for presymplectic groupoids as well, for DMCTs. Okay, so just like before, uh, this presymplectic groupoid gives the gives its leaf space an integral affine orbifold structure, which allows us to define an affine measure just just like before. Of course, we can still define the darcy heckman measure by just pushing down the Liouville uh, measure to the leaf space. Um, right, so now we want to, we want to know, we want to see how are these two things related, right? And we would like these to be related by a polynomial function again. Uh, right, this, there is a group with, actually this, this group with that I mentioned is Morita equivalent again to the group with that is acting uh, in a way that actually preserves the integral of fine structure on the, on the leaf spaces too. 
Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Um, so this allows us to basically write this Darcy Heckman measure. We can write it as first pushing down by the moment map down to M and then pushing down to the leaf space of G. Right. Um, you can show that this operation of pushing down along uh, mu yields again a nice you know vol type function times this measure on m that presents the affine measure so this vol red I, I, is basically a similar thing as before where we take the number of connected components of the isotropy times the symplectic volume of the reduced space this reduced space is now a symplectic orbifold so it still has a, a well-defined volume so this is the function there which means that you have a relation like this. And what I really believe is true is that this vol red function is a polynomial on B, but I, I wish I had managed to prove it before this talk, I didn't, but I do believe it to be true. And uh, if I do that, then you see that this is again a polynomial measure. That's it. <laughs>